Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. Did you know that just like how your camera needs to be matched to your OTA, in order to achieve precision guiding, your guide scope also needs to be matched to your OTA. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now I've been receiving some requests lately on guiding videos as well as how do you improve your guiding. So while we're waiting for these clouds to clear out, I thought this would be a fun video to get started and uh, also have you make a mental note or even jot down in your notebook to check your setup and see if your setup's matched. Now your camera to OTA relationship determines a number called arc seconds per pixel. And the easiest way to understand that is how much sky fits in each pixel of your camera. And this is a relationship between the focal length of your telescope and your camera pixels. Now keep in mind, focal length determines the zoom of your telescope. The longer the focal length, the more zoomed in you are. And you take away focal length and now you're zooming out. And this goes for focal extenders and focal reducers as well. You can either zoom in or zoom out. Now your guide scope also has a relationship very similar. And that relationship between your camera and OTA needs to be matched with the relationship of your guide camera and your guide scope. Now, have you ever taken your cell phone and zoomed all the way in on an object? The further in you zoom, the more the image on your camera is affected by movement. Now, if we take two cell phones side by side and we zoom all the way in on one cell phone and then we keep the other cell phone at the standard zoom and we point them at the same object and we move both cameras the same amount. You're going to see that the one that is zoomed all the way in is going to be a lot more affected than the one that's not zoomed in at all. Now, how does this work? How does this affect your guiding? Keep in mind, guiding is essentially locking in on a star, and we call that the guide star. Your guiding software monitors the movements of your guide star. And as that guide star moves, your guiding software is going to send commands to your mount to move the RA axis or declination axis or both in order to keep the guide star centered. This helps us accurately track across the night sky and keep your images in top quality, keeping your stars nice and round, and also keeping your image from doubling up. Now, as the relationship of your guide scope gets further away from your OTA, your guiding is going to be affected. Think about the two cell phones side by side. In other words, if we were to take this Orion guide scope, this guide scope is going to guide differently than, let's say, this guide scope here. And also, we have the Orion guide camera and we have an ASI 585MC. This camera in the Orion guide scope is going to track or guide differently than this ASI camera in the Orion guide scope. And the same thing goes for this William Optics guide scope as well. This will guide differently with each camera. So how do we determine how a guide scope is matched to an OTA? Well, that goes off of ratio. And it's super easy to figure out the ratio between your OTA and your primary imaging camera and your guide scope and guide camera. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And the ratio that we want to stay within is we do not want to go above 5 to 1. 5 to 1 is the sweet spot. We want to stay 5 to 1 or less. And you can go a little bit above, and it's not really going to hurt anything. But again, if you want precision guiding, you want to stay below 5 to 1 or right at 5 to 1. Now let's jump on into my computer, and let's take a look at how to determine your guide scope and guide camera relationship to your primary OTA and primary imaging camera. So how do we confirm that our guide scope is matched to our OTA? Or if you're out to buy a guiding system, 
how do you match your guide scope to your OTA? Now it's important to keep in mind if you're not within or perfectly within the five to one or less ratio, but you're getting results that you're happy with both with final image as well as guiding, there's nothing to worry about. You are perfectly fine. There's no reason to run out and buy new equipment. But if you are trying to buy a guiding system and um, you, know, you wanna make sure that you get your optimal guiding, I would highly recommend going through this exercise to make sure that you get a guide scope that is matched to your OTA as that is the easiest way to get the results that you're looking for. And if you're having some issues with guiding, this is a good exercise to check your current equipment to make sure that it's properly matched as this could be part of the problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our favorite web browser and we're gonna go to google.com. We'll go ahead and type in guide scope suitability. And if you don't see it populate, go ahead and continue typing guide scope suitability until you see it pop up. We'll go ahead and click and we're gonna go to astronomy.tools. Now this should look familiar as this is the same website that I demonstrated when I went over matching your camera to your OTA. We'll go ahead and click Guide Scope Suitability Calculator with astronomy.tools, and that's gonna bring you to this page right here. Here you'll see where you can enter in your uh, telescope information for your primary OTA, your camera information for your uh, primary imaging camera, as well as your guide scope information and guide camera information. You can also enter in a Barlow or extender and reducer information any kind of CCD binning that you're doing. And you can do that both for your primary imaging setup as well as your guiding setup. I'm gonna demonstrate this with my uh, Skywatcher 200P. So under telescope with imaging camera and telescope, I'm gonna go ahead and type in Quattro. I'll choose the Skywatcher Quattro 8 inch F4. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the ASI 2600mm slash MC Pro. That'll automatically populate the focal length of the 200P as well as pixel size of the 2600. Now, if you don't see your camera information or your telescope information, you can go ahead and manually enter the information here. Again, make sure that your CCD binning is accurate to what you use, as well as if you're using any Barlow's, extenders, or reducers. Under guide camera and telescope, we'll enter in our guide scope information and guide camera information. I'm gonna go ahead and type in Orion, and I'm gonna look for the Orion mini guide scope, as that's the guide scope that I'm using. Make sure that the guide scope information that you enter is accurate. Again, if you don't see it in the dropdown, enter the focal length manually. For the guide camera, I'm currently using the Orion Starshoot Auto Guider. So I'll click on that. And again, if you don't see your guide camera, just enter in the pixel size manually. Here, you'll see that I'm at a 6.83 to one. I don't know why they have this written backwards. This will read out as a one to 6.83, but this is the number that I was uh, referring to earlier where you wanna be five to one or less, or how it's read out here, a one to five or less. Now, this is a perfect example of what I just went over. As you can see, I'm not quite within the five to one ratio. However, with this setup here, I get really good guiding. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. But if you are in search of a guiding system, I would highly recommend getting a setup that falls within the five to one ratio, or as is read out here, one to five. So let's change things up a little bit and let's see how this number gets affected. Let's go ahead and let's choose the Omni XLT 150 Newtonian. That was my original telescope. Now, just changing out the, um, the OTA, you can see that our imaging to guiding ratio has changed. So as you enter in your equipment, you're gonna see this number change. Let's go back to the Skywatcher. 
and let's go ahead we'll take my Skywatcher 200P with my ASI 2600 and we'll keep the Orion mini guide scope intact here and the other camera that I have in my toolbox is the ASI 585MC. I've actually recently started using that camera as a guide camera and I've been getting the best guiding of my life. And I'm just speaking from experience here with my personal equipment and let's see why. So we're outside of the 5 to 1 ratio. We're at 6.83 to 1. Let's go ahead and choose the ASI 585MC. And as you can see, that puts us at a 3.81 to 1 ratio between the guiding system and the primary imaging system. So now we're under the 5 to 1 and my guiding has actually drastically improved just by switching out my camera here. So this is exactly how you want to use this in order to figure out which guiding system that you should get based off of your primary imaging system. Also, if you're planning on using a Barlow or focal extender or a reducer, it's also a good idea to hop in here and check to see how this will affect it. So we're currently at 3.81 to 1 with the setup that you see right here on the left side of the screen. If we wanted to throw a 0.8 reducer in the mix for a specific target, we can see how that'll affect our guiding. And on the flip side, if we wanted to put in a three time focal extender or a three time Barlow, we can see that the guiding probably will not work with this setup that we have right here in hand. But let's say that we were to go and let's go to custom scope. And let's say we found a 390 millimeter focal length guide scope. That now, just by swapping out the guide scope from the Orion guide scope to a 390 millimeter guide scope, keeping everything the same, the 200P with the 2600 on primary imaging and keeping the ASI 585MC Pro within the guide camera, just by swapping out the guide scope with a 390 millimeter guide scope with a three time uh, Barlow or focal extender puts us at a 4.75 to one guiding ratio. Now keep in mind, this three time Barlow is also going to affect the focal length of our primary OTA. So this will put us over essentially a thousand millimeters of focal length. So this may not quite work. Uh, this is where an off axis guider will come in, but you can see how just changing out the equipment, using different equipment can affect how your guiding system ratio to your primary imaging system ratio is affected. Now, if you are using an off axis guider, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to use your primary OTA as your guide scope because you are essentially using the same OTA. So we would choose the same OTA if we were trying to set this up for a uh, off axis guider. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? Are you currently using this tool? And what is your current uh, guide scope to primary OTA ratio? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.